guys, today we are making beef stroganoff. So I'm getting my ingredients ready before we go to the range to cook. First, we have some mushrooms. These are the white button mushrooms and they're kind of large. And then we have, of course, some garlic. I've got some heavy cream. I've got half of a small onion and then I've got a part of a bell pepper. I'm cooking for three people tonight, so obviously you could increase this recipe if you need to, but I'm cooking for just three, and I just wanna show you the technique of making your own beef stroganoff, making your own mushroom sauce. We're not using anything from the can, so stick with me and I'm gonna walk you through this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a whole head of garlic and we're going to cut that into small little pieces, which is called mincing. So I'm gonna push on the head of garlic and break that apart. And then what we wanna take out is the bigger cloves. All right, I got the larger cloves and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop them and then mince them. So we pop them by putting the knife on the top of the garlic with the blade facing away from us and we pop it and peel it. So I'm gonna do that to all these cloves and then I'm gonna mince them. All right, I cut the bell pepper up into small pieces, and I also cut up the onion into kind of the same size pieces. We want equal parts of bell pepper and onion, so if you want more, use more. If you want less, use less, but we need that flavor in there. Now all we have left to do is the mushrooms and the beef. So mushrooms, you really don't want to wash. If there's any dirt on them, like this one, you want to wipe it off. Mushrooms are like a sponge, and when you put them in the water to wash them off, then they absorb that water, and then they're not gonna absorb the great flavor that we want them to absorb from our dish. So we're just gonna wipe them off. So we're going to slice our mushrooms into kind of big slices because they're gonna cook down, and we don't want them to cook down and go completely away. So we're gonna cut them into big pieces. All right, so we have our garlic, I have our bell pepper, have our onion, and we have the mushrooms. We have all of our veggies cut. Now the only thing that we need to cut is our beef. And I'm gonna show you how to take one piece of meat and feed three people from that one steak. I have a New York strip here, and it's just one steak, but we're gonna feed three people with this one steak. So you never want to put raw meat onto your wooden cutting board. So I have a, a set of these plastic cutting boards that I use for things like this. I put it directly on top of my wooden cutting board. And then I can still use the same area with the wooden cutting board, but I'm not getting the raw meat onto it. So we always want to cut against the grain. So if the grain goes this way, we want to cut this way. And we want to cut this into little strips. And that's what we're going to put in our beef stroganoff. So I'm going to get that all cut up, and then I'm going to meet you over at the range to show you how to put it all together. Now we're going to cook our stroganoff. So the first thing we're doing is we're gonna add about four tablespoons of butter to the pan and we're gonna let that melt for just a few minutes. Now, to the pan with the butter, we're gonna go ahead and add our garlic right on top of that butter. All right, we're gonna add the onions and the bell pepper and we're gonna get that cooking down. Everything we add to the pan is, is developing flavor in the pan. That's gonna be the flavor inside of our food. This is the meat that I cut up, and we're gonna go ahead and add it directly to the pan. Now, we wanna season our meat. We don't wanna overcook our meat, so we're gonna get it in and out pretty quickly. So salt and pepper, I use a salt pinch pot for my salt so that I can grab the amount that I want. A little bit of salt, not too much on there. A little bit of pepper. We're going to add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce.
And we're also going to add a little bit of soy. All right, we want to get this meat down on the bottom of the pan so we can get just a little color on our meat, and then we're going to take it out. Like I said, we don't want to overcook the meat. We just wanted to get it going, get some flavor in there. At the same time, we're cooking down our bell peppers and our onions and our delicious garlic, building flavors. You can see the juices from that meat in the bottom of the pan. This is all the flavors that are going to be in our food. Our water has boiled, so we're ready to put our pasta in there. And what we have is some egg noodles. And I like to get the wide egg noodles. You can get whichever kind you like. They're gonna cook pretty fast, so this is all gonna come together pretty quickly. We always wanna salt our water after it boils, not before. If you salt it before it boils, it takes longer for it to come up to a boil. Salt water takes longer than unsalted water to boil, so we want to wait till after it boils to put that in there. I'm going to add our egg noodles to the pot. All right, I'm ready to take the meat out. We want to leave all the juices in the pan, so I'm going to use a slotted spoon to take the meat out. We don't want to get the juice, we want to use that to make our mushroom sauce. All right, now you see all the juices that we have in there. What we're gonna add to this now is our mushrooms. And it looks like a lot of mushrooms, but you're gonna see they're gonna soak up all that juice. This mushroom sauce is really easy to make and it's the same one that you would buy. It's made from mushrooms. Um, it's going to have a great flavor, and we're not going to have all those extra additives and preservatives in our food. You see it's making a nice, beautiful color there. Let's let these mushrooms cook down by themselves for just a few minutes, and then I'll finish up this sauce. Our mushrooms have gotten some nice color to them, and you can see we're starting to get some darkening on the edges of the pan and a little bit on the bottom of the pan. That's called fond, and we are fond of fond because fond means flavor. So now what we're gonna add to our pan is heavy cream. We're gonna stir that. That's actually what we're using to deglaze the pan. You'll see it's gonna take that stuff off the edges, the fond off the edges, the flavor off the edges. We're putting that back into our sauce. We don't wanna leave that in the pan. Make sure that we get all of this. And sometimes you deglaze with wine, sometimes you deglaze with another liquid, and sometimes you deglaze with um, broth or milk or cream. There's lots of different things you can deglaze with, but the purpose of deglazing is to get all the flavor that just went onto the pan into your food now. All right, to this sauce, we gotta add some things. We gotta flavor it up a little bit. We're of course gonna add some Worcestershire. As you can see, I'm not really measuring, but I will link the recipe for this. And we're gonna add a little more soy. We're gonna, of course, gonna add some of the secret seasoning. If you don't have secret seasoning, you could use some garlic and onion. I make a secret seasoning that I blend garlic and onion with a lot of other herbs and spices, and this is basically my seasoning. So you can make your own, or you can just use some garlic and onion. And you can be pretty liberal with that. There's no salt in here. The reason that we were kind of uh, scant with the salt to begin with, as you can see, is because we've added soy twice. Soy is a form of salt as well, so we didn't want to have it too salty. So you have to think about that when you're making your recipe. Think about what's going to be in it. I'm going to go ahead and add some pepper, and then I'm going to stir these seasonings in. Oh, that sauce looks delicious. All right, it's time to taste our sauce and see how the sauce is. 
You always want to make sure you taste to see if you need some final um, seasonings, final flavor. The sauce tastes perfect. So I think we are spot on. At this point, if you need to add salt or you need to add pepper or you need to add more seasoning, this is the point to do that. In this recipe too, you could also do the roasted red peppers that come in the jar instead of doing the fresh bell pepper that I used. That would be fine for the recipe as well. All right, our pasta has been cooking. It's got just a minute. We're gonna go ahead and add, turn this burner off and add our meat back to the sauce. All of the juice from the meat too that was in the bottom of this bowl, we want to make sure we get in there because that's also flavor. All right, we're gonna let, we're gonna turn that back on, let that come back to a boil just for a second because we have one more thing to add to the sauce and that is gonna be our sour cream. That's what gives it that unique flavor that we're used to from a beef stroganoff. Our sauce has come back to a boil, so it's time to add our final ingredient to the sauce, which is our sour cream. We're gonna go ahead and turn this back off. We're gonna add the sour cream right to the sauce. Stir this in. It gives the sauce that extra twang. It's that flavor that we're used to from a beef stroganoff and it's just delicious. Once you get that fully incorporated into your sauce, you can see it lightened it up a little bit. Really nice sauce. You can tell that the sauce is done because it's coating our spoon and when we run our hands through it, it, it leaves a a line in the middle of the spoon. That's called nappe. We're looking for that when, anytime we make a sauce. We're looking for it to hold its own. That lets you know the sauce is thick enough to coat the pasta, which is what we want it to do. All right, our pasta is ready for us to put in here. I recommend using something like this. It's called a spider. If you don't have one, you can pick one up for, they're pretty inexpensive, but I always tell you to save that pasta water. That pasta water is like liquid gold. We never throw that away. So we want to make sure that we keep the pasta water and in case we need it to thicken up our sauce. Now our sauce looks pretty good. I don't think we're gonna need it, but we're still gonna save it just in case. So what I do, I use the spider to pick up the pasta. It's okay if a little of the sauce gets in there with it. And as I told you, I'm probably not gonna use all of this pasta. We'll save some later for some buttered pasta. Back over here, get this stirred together. Now you wanna to top this with a little bit of green onions. You could do some chives. Um, any kind of greenery. You could just do parsley if you'd like to do that. You want to stir it all together. You see it's coating the pasta really well. We can see our meat. Our veggies have cooked down in there. Sprinkle the green onions right on the top just to give you a little extra flavor and a little extra color. And there you have your beautiful beef stroganoff. Enjoy!